All right, everybody. We're going to show you real quick the first of three ways to add a new tool to your tool database. All right. Let's go up and just for the sake of this example, we're going to keep all our presets right where they are. Okay. I'm going to keep my width and my height at two inches by two inches. Uh, any of you who've been following me by now, you know that I always start my z-axis from the very top of my material not my spoiler board uh, for the sake of this we'll go with the one inch material thickness my datum point for my I always start in the middle of my material that's just how I do it units of measurements in the United States are inches we click OK so the work surface the job size right now is really a moot point it does not matter for the sake of this example all right we're going to open up our tool pass tab over here on the right and we're going to pin it so that we have it. Now, you can find your tool database in two locations. In VCarve Pro, it will be located over here on the right hand side of the screen in your tool path operations tab. You have where you would assign a profile tool path, pocketing tool path, a drilling operation tool path, so on and so forth. Right here you have display database. There it is. You can also find it in the upper left hand menu bar file edit tool pass your drop down menu tool database. So whether you get it from the top of your menu bar or you get it from over on the right hand side in your tool pass operation either way it's the same. Now the first and the easiest tooling to put in is going to be we're going to basically take and we're going to copy a pre-existing mill okay for the sake of the example we'll use an end mill it could be a v-bit it could be a round nose but for the sake of this example we will use an end mill let's come up here let's highlight the half inch and let's delete him real quick on just our end mill now I'm going to take this quarter inch I'm going to click on it I am going to come down to my database down here and I'm going to click copy. Literally this simple guys. Now we see we have a second quarter inch end mill. What we want to do is we want to edit it. Well, I am going to enter the punitive information in for this copied mill. Regardless if we copy the eighth inch, the quarter inch, or we copy a half inch, we make it something else, it does not matter. This is the simplest way to create a new tool, especially one that's identical. We need to put in all the pertinent information. Now I know for a fact that if this was a half inch end mill, that the shank on this would also be a half inch. My pass depth for an end mill this size, I know that I can go at least a quarter of an inch deep. My step over on most of my mills, I go 40 to 50 percent. That's up to you though. I prefer not to go over 50 because I don't want the cutter removing any more than half of its own width on each additional pass. You can run it less than that if you choose, but I don't go more than 50. Spindle speed, feed rate, and plunge rate. These are all going to be determined by your piece of equipment. I've told you guys that before. 12,000 is a pretty good starting point for my, uh, for my little Cam Master Stinger. My feed rate on this particular end mill would be, oh goodness, I'd start out at at least 120 inches per minute, and I would dial it in from there. Plunge rate, well plunge rate is my speed in which how fast my z-axis is going to drop that bit down into the material 30 inches per minute is, is to me is a fairly that's a fairly common speed and then last and least is our tooling number right here now this is not applicable to me probably won't be applicable to most of you unless you have an automatic tool changer on your machine now you're able to take and assign this specific tool to this specific tool number so that when you go to do a uh, when your automatic tool changer goes to do a tool change it knows that if it wants the half inch end mill here it would need to go to tool station or tool number one in tool station number one in your machine I again don't have this 
So regardless of what I assign this, it's going to do nothing in my particular piece of equipment. Okay, folks? Regardless, again, if this is an end mill, a ball nose, a V-bit, doesn't matter. It's a common used mill. You can copy it and you can change the name and all the parameters on it to suit your machine. You click apply. You can see right here we saved it now under our quarter inch. Our copy is now that half inch with all the punitive information put in. Simple, simple. Guys, stay tuned. We've, uh, we've got another one and we'll show you real quick how we do that.